Hi there, thanks for checking out this repair channel. Uh, we work electric fence boxes of all kinds of ages and styles, uh, you know, multiple brands that are out there, old style, new style. I mean, if it's electric fence box, we'll tinker on it, no matter what brand it is or how old it is. So if you've got a fence charger, we'd be happy to look at it. You can go to our website, which is fencerfixer.com. Fencer is spelled like this, and fixer is spelled with F, and so it's F-I-X-E-R. Go to the description tab down below, or a little link on there to take you to our website. But uh, we work on all brands, all ages, uh, free estimates, and 18-month repair warranties, everything that we work on, on the repairs performed. So that does include uh, lightning as part of the warranty. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to our channel, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, you can go to our website and find out more about us. But we work on a lot of electric fence boxes for people. But anyway, this is an old Sears electric fencer. It's a weed burner type. Uh, I think Sears didn't make any of their fence boxes and stuff. They just had them private labeled for their stores. Um, I'm going to guess this possibly was made by Parmac for Sears, only because Parmac made a few solar units, uh, you know, battery-powered solar units for them back in the day uh, and it also uses that same kind of casing as the old metal Parmax used. It even used the same kind of rivets. So I'm going to guess uh, this was made by Parmac. But this is probably like a 1960s, 70s model I would guess. It's similar in the idea of how the old Hold'em Model 57s were built. Uh, same idea but Hold'em was uh, their own brand. Parmac was their own brand. Um, I believe and this has a old uh, this has a three prong circuit breaker deal thing on there um, I did try a new one on it first and it didn't seem to work right what it was doing it was coming on and powering up and stuff but that red light bulb wasn't working uh, I thought it was just the bulb but the bulb was fine so it ended up being something feeding the bulb was what the issue is but um, this is the inside of it uh, I did try it like I said I did try a new one of these it didn't seem to help anything um so I put theirs back in there and this and it, what it did the same thing so i put theirs back in there so we could run it and uh but this is the inside of it, it has a you know, power coming in a couple fuses there on the power on the on the line side and the neutral side it has a capacitor there that, that what charges and discharges has another resistor there uh, tie things together but the one thing uh, they do make four prong versions of, of these old weed burner types but the four prong and three prong are wired up differently inside here this receptacle area you know the receptacle thing is four holes in it it comes with a three prong that's what you got to put in there you can't put a four prong into a three prong it won't work right and vice versa you can't put a four prong into a three prong or a three prong into a four prong it, they're all wired up differently but there's the transformer. It's what takes the voltage in and spikes it up, puts it out to your fencing ground terminals. Got some resistors here to um, to um, help with the uh, limiting of the power going to the bulbs and and stuff. Uh, this big power resistor here is a 30k 10 watt resistor, so 30,000 ohm 10 watt resistor that goes in series between the output of the transformer hot side and um, the hot terminal. That's what limits the power output from the transformer to here, so it's at a safe shock level, so it won't hurt anybody. I mean, these things don't shock like the old, like the newer ones, or the ones since the 19, late 70s, early 80s, and, and current ones. They're not a solid state. They're not a um, low impedance unit, you know, so they don't pop you and hit you like that. They, um, they just, they're a long duration shock. Um, these things also output an AC voltage. Uh, it's like, I think this thing I measured it before, earlier was like 600 volts, roughly AC, is what this thing was putting out. Um, all the newer ones and current, all the low impedance ones anyways, all output in DC voltage, like 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 plus volt, uh, volt DC is what all the current lineup does on all the different brands. These were uh, high voltage AC every time they shocked. So, but um, let's power it on here, and I'll show you that's working. These things do have a, you have to let them warm up and run, uh, warm up before they'll power on. And it should, it takes about 20 seconds, give or take, for the power on. 
And what it's going to do, this light's going to come on. This is your power light. It says charge, but this is power light. And your fence light over here. Every time this lights up is when it's putting power to the fence. And if this light goes out, I believe I'll we'll test it here in a minute. If this light goes out, that means you've got a pretty heavy load on the fence, too much for this thing to uh, handle. But you can see it um, going along there, pulsing along. We'll put the multimeter on here. And yeah, and you can't use an electric fence tester to test these weed burner types. Uh, they don't put out the same kind of shock. They're not a, a DC output high voltage. They're a high voltage AC. So you put your meter across here. And like I see, it peaks out about, saying about 600 volts, give or take. AC every time it shocks. So these things shock a little bit differently. They don't, um, I'm going to zoom in, hopefully. We're going to put a screwdriver across the terminals here. And I'm just going to go uh, find another screwdriver. We hit the hot terminal, ground terminal, and we're gonna we'll get these two screwdrivers real close together. So that's the kind of shock it does. It's a long duration shock. And I did notice something as I was doing this. If I um, short it out or get real close together, that top light, the fence light will go out. So you see the top light doesn't work anymore. As soon as you fix, you know, clean up the fence some of the resistance on the fence on the vegetation goes away or gets low enough that this thing can handle it again um, tells you that the fence is okay but the fence light goes out I mean you've got a pretty bad short or too much vegetation for this thing to handle I'm sure it's doing something because it's got a kills weeds touching fence so um, these things are these were what back in the day that would start had a chance to start brush fires they had a constant current ones back in this day before these ones that were always on they were just a constant like 600 volt 500 volts ac all the time and um that's where you would hear stories about brush fires and stuff like that on there and that's when they finally went to these uh intermittent uh long duration shocks so that way it hopefully lessened the chance of brush fires but then later on the solid state stuff came along and that slowly kind of weeded these things out and because they would shoot a spark like this big out of them you know, they were sitting seven, eight, nine, ten thousand volts out of some of them things. And those uh, were, they were working side by side with these old units. Uh, solid State came along and, and then eventually, back in the late 70s, Gallagher came to the United States, maybe mid-70s. They were the ones that invented the uh, low impedance stuff back in the 60s over there in New Zealand and Australia. And when they came here in the States in the 70s, people were like, what's this New Zealand fence stuff? What is this all about? And uh, they went to a show. This is a story I heard. They went to a, sto a show up in uh, New England state somewhere, I think. At least the East Coast somewhere. And they had a, um, they put up a row of Christmas lights, like a 150-foot roll or whatever it was of Christmas lights. And they, these weed burn things had been long gone by this time. Most of them, had, they, people had stopped using them. Or were still using them, but you couldn't really buy them anymore. They became unpopular when the solid state stuff came along. But they took the biggest unit that whatever brand it was that was out there and they took one of their biggest units that they were going to bring here to the States. And people were like, what the hell is this low impedance stuff? What is this Gallagher electric fence stuff? What is this Kiwi New Zealand stuff? What is this stuff? So they took that 150 foot roll or whatever it was, 150 bulb roll of um, Christmas lights put it across the biggest one that they could get their hands on by whatever brand it was, put it across the fence and ground it lit up about, I don't know, 10 lights or whatever it was. It wasn't very many. It was a I was like, oh, look at that. It's lighting up some lights. Because all those lights, the more you add to it, the more resistance it is because each bulb has a load to it, so to the whatever charger, whatever's hooked up to it. 
<laughs> so they lit up, say, 10 lights, or 20 lights, or 30 lights, whatever it was. And then they said, that's pretty nice. So they hooked up to their unit, and it lit up every single bulb, and, and all 150 roll, uh, either 150 foot roll, or 150 bulb roll, whatever it was. It lit up every single one of them, and uh, just kept them popping all of them. They're like, wow, well, this is uh, something pretty neat. This is a pretty strong unit. So uh, they started making them and selling them here in the States, and then that's how low impede stuff came along, and that's what drove out a lot of the solid state stuff went away eventually they were still around in the into the 80s but eventually everybody else jumped on board a low impedance stuff and that's what everybody uses now everybody does a low impedance wide impedance ultra low whatever you want to call it. it's all the same idea just everybody does it a little bit different but it does those great big capacitive discharge through a multiplier circuit or a step up transformer on the board everybody does a little bit different but it, it it's all the same idea but anyways, that's a little history on this thing. This is a pretty neat looking old unit. Um, you can probably step up the output. The voltage might be the same out here. Maybe a little higher, but you can uh, change out the resistor to a lesser resistance one and get a, probably a little bit more uh, shock at the terminals. But 600 volts on a weed burner one is plenty of power uh, for what this thing's designed to do. It's the safest way to do it. People, I've seen some of these old units um, that would people would remove this and put a jumper wire straight put the hot terminal of the resist transform straight to the hot terminal and um that's where uh you know it's kind of a safety issue at that time and you'll get a hell of a shock but animal gets tangled up in it or a person or a bunch of grass you know that's going to really do some damage to somebody or something and that's why those resistors are there so um I'm going to put this thing back together, but hopefully this helped you out in this video. If you got an old Sears unit or weed burner type unit, uh, sometimes they can be repaired. Depends on how far gone they are. This was a really nice unit. It's pretty for being 50 years old or whatever. Um, pretty nice looking unit. So remember to subscribe to our channel. Um, hit the thumbs up button. Visit our website at fencerfixer.com and fencer is spelled just like that F E N C E R and fencer or fixer is F I X E R. But this is an old Sears electric fence box we got going for a customer. So until we do another video of how one works or how to fix one or the insides, what one looks like, we will see you guys later.